The sum of Zipporah's age and Dinah's age is 51. The sum of Julio's age and Dinah's age is 54. And Zipporah is 7. How old is Julio? So Z plus D is 51. J plus D is 54. And they are telling me that uh, Z is 7. Okay. So if we put 7 into here and solve, then that means D would be equal to 44. And then I put 44 here with the J plus D, and that would give me that J is 10, I believe. And I think that's what they're asking for. A circular track has radius of 60 meters. Ali runs around the circular track at a constant speed of 6 meters per second. A track in the shape of an equilateral triangle has a side length of x meters. Darius runs around this triangular track at a constant speed of 5 meters per second. Ali and Darius each compete, complete one lap in exactly the same amount of time. What is the value of x? So, as always, we have speed is equal to distance over time. And in this, or whatever variation you want to use, time is equal to distance over speed. And in this question, for the first guy, who is Ali, that speed is 6. And the distance is, I guess, the circumference, or, yeah, the circumference of the circle, which would be 2 pi r. 2 times pi times r, and the radius is 60. So it would be 120 pi. So the time will be 120 pi over 6, which is 20 pi. All right. So the next guy, Darius, um, he, same kind of story. Time is equal to distance over speed. But for him, the distance is, uh, it's an equilateral triangle. So if this is an equilateral triangle and has a side length of x, right? So the total... Uh, distance would be 3x. And his speed is 5. Right here. And they're saying that these times are equal. The Each complete one lap in exactly the same amount of time. So we we'll set them equal to each other. 20 pi is equal to 3x over 5. And let's see here. So that's going to be 100 pi over 3 is equal to x. And that is what they wanted, the value of x. If 2 to the power of 200 times 2 to the power of 203 plus 2 to 163 times 2 to 241 plus 2 to 126 times 2 to 277 is 32, and what is the value of n? Let's see here. So this whole thing, remember, bases are the same, so you've got to add the exponents, so that's going to be 403. Same thing here, bases are the same, you can add the exponents, so that's going to be 404, I believe. And then same thing here, that's going to be 403. And then the 32, I'm going to change that to a power of 2, and I believe it's 2 to the power of 5. Okay, so that's some progress. Let's factor out a 2 to the 403, and that's going to give me 1 plus 2 to the power of 1 plus 1 and this will be 2 to the power of 5n. So we have 2 to the power of 403, and then in the bracket, that's just 4, and 4 is 2 to the power of 2. So I'm just doing that carefully. And then now, bases are the same, so we can add those guys, so it would be 2 to the power of 405 is 2 to the power of 5n. So since the bases are the same, the exponents are the same, so 405 is 5n, and therefore n would be 81. How many ordered pairs of integers x, y satisfy x squared is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to x plus 6? All right. Well, I initially, I'm thinking of plotting this on a graph, but somehow I don't know if that's going to be the best way. It's very tempting to do that, but 
but I, I I think I'm just gonna do it manually. It might might be easier to do it manually, and, and I'll explain what I mean by that just by plugging in numbers. And they don't tell us if it's positive or negative, so let me just start with zero and go in one direction, and then I'll go in the other direction. So if x is zero, we have a situation where uh, what do we have here? If x is zero then that means y is less than or equal to 6 and greater than or equal to 0, correct? So that means y is either one, 0, 1, all the way till 6. And that's 7 numbers, 0 to 6 inclusive. So it would be 7 pairs. Okay? So you see kind of the system I'm doing here. Let's try x equals 1. So that makes this guy, this inequality, 1 less than y less than 7. So that means y can be anything from 1 to 7, and that's another 7 pairs. Okay, uh, moving right along. When x is 2, it would be 4 less than equal to y less than 8, correct? So that means 4 all the way till 8, and that's 5 numbers. Let's try x equals 3, 9 less than y less than 9. Oh, so this is just 9, so there's one, only 1 there. Now, the thing after that, it doesn't work anymore. Because if you do x equals 4, it'll be 16 less than y less than 10. And obviously, this doesn't have any solutions. As a number cannot be greater than 16 and less than 10. So we've exhausted our uh, values in terms of the positive ones. So now we've got to go in the opposite direction. Because it do doesn't tell us that x has to be positive. It could be negative. So let's try negative 1. So that would be 1 less than y less than 5, I believe. So that means this could be anything from 1 to 5. And there's five, five of those pairs. Let's try negative 2. Negative 2 uh, from the 4 and then 4. Okay, so that just gives me 4, so 1. And then I think that's it. Because if it's negative 3, it would be 9 and 3 and this has no solutions there so we add up these guys so 7 7 14 14 plus 5 19 20 26 so 26 total pairs would satisfy that uh, set of inequalities a right angled triangle with interior side lengths has one side with length 605 this side is neither the shortest side nor the longest side of the triangle what is the maximum possible length of the shortest side of the triangle so let's draw a little triangle here and it's right angled and let's label it a b and c and what they're saying is that if a is less than b is less than c that basically the b is the 605 so that means we put the 605 in there and because it's right we can have a Pythagorean relationship that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Okay, and that's pretty much, as far as I can tell, all we have to work with. So let's work with that. So let's immediately just put in that 605. And then let's put the 605 by itself. And the c squared minus a squared. Now, at this point, I was kind of wondering, where do I go? Do I use the triangle inequality? When, if I remember, what is the triangle inequality? It would be a plus b has to be uh, greater than c, right? Is that right? It's been such a long time. Yeah, because a plus b can't be equal to c, because then you wouldn't be able to make a triangle. And if a plus b was less than c, then you wouldn't be able to make a triangle so I don't know if this is going to be useful though so for some reason I don't see how I could incorporate that let me just work with this and see what happens so 605 squared this can be factored fairly easily c minus a c plus a and I think at this point we just got to do this big long song and dance where we find two factors that multiply together to give 605 squared and then of course that would involve breaking this up into its prime factors. So what is 605 in terms of its five prime factors? It's 5 times 121. And then 121 is 
11 times 11, right? So it's basically 5 to the power of 1 and 11 to the power of 2. So 605 squared would basically be 5 to the power of 2 times 11 to the power of 4. Yeah. So 5 to the power of 2 times 11 to the power of 4 is C minus A times C plus A. Okay. And then just in terms of how many factors, you guys remember how to do that, right? It's 2, in this case, it would be 2 plus 1 times 4 plus 1. And that's uh, 15. This is how many factors. But the good news here is that we know for sure that C plus A is going to be greater than C minus A since both, all of these guys are positive, right? A, B, and C are positive integers. So that means of these 15 factors, we only have to consider the ones where C plus A is greater than C minus A, and I think that cuts, cuts it in half probably. Okay, and I think unfortunately, we have to do all that manually. Uh, I don't see it any other way. Okay, so let's do it manually, and let's see what we get. We're concentrating on this, this equation. So we're going to have C plus A, C minus A, and then of course we're going to have to figure out the value of C, the value of A, and then, and then, uh, what is the other thing? Ah, oh yes, yes, yes. A has to be less than 605 because they want you to give you the maximum, because we're going to have a lot of values, so they're going to want you to figure out the maximum possible length of the shortest side. Okay, I got it, I got it. Because a lot of these will be disqualified because we have to adhere to this A less than 605. So some of them won't be less than 605. Let me just put that in there. A has to be less than 605 uh, just to ensure that it qualifies. All right, so off we go. And my gut instinct is that of those 15 factors, Half of those are, are the only half we'll have to do since we have to abide by this rule that C plus A has to be greater than C minus A. Okay, so let me let me keep that in the screen here. This this guy right here. This is important. Yeah, that's important. Okay, so let's let's start. So the first one, of course, if it's one, and then the whole thing is C plus A. And to get C, to get C, if you think, well, how am I going to get C? Just add these guys. Add this guy and add this guy. And that would give you 2C and then divide by 2. So when you do that, you would get 1, 8, 3, 0, 1, 3. And to they get A, you can just plug it into one of these guys, like this one, for example. C minus A is 1. So that would give you A fairly, fairly easily. So this is an immediate note. So, because A has to be less than 605. So, you see how we got to do this? Okay, so let's keep going here. The next one, this guy and 5. This will give me 36605, 103, 102, so no. Okay, next one, 5 to the power of 2, 11 to the power of 3, and this is 11. This will give me 16643. This will give me 16632, so no. And let's see here, what's the next one? Just the 11 to the 4 would be 5 to the 2, 7333, 3, 3, and 7308. So no. Next one, uh, let's see here, 5 times 11 to the power of 3, and then this would be 5 times 11. So this would be 3355, three, five, and this would be 3300. Zero, zero. Still a no. And let me move this up here. Uh, so very time consuming, right? So 5 to the power of 2 times 11 to the power of 2. This is going to be 11 to the power of 2. And this will be 1573 and 1452. No. Hopefully we'll get one sooner or later. And this is 11 to the power of 3, 5, 2, and 11. This is 803. And this is 528. So there we go. We got one. Yes. And the next one. This is 5 times 11 squared, 5 times 11 squared. This will be 605, and this will be 0. This is yes. And then all the other ones, 
c plus a will be less than c minus a. Like if I keep going, so they don't, they they are not going to be used uh, in this tally. And also, if you notice, the values of a keeps going down. So what they want is you to find the maximum possible length of the shortest side, which is a. And of course, it has to uh, satisfy that condition. So we already did that. The maximum possible possible value of a that satisfies that condition is this guy right here, 528. So a equals 528. Uh, maximum, I guess, max a is 528. Suppose that a, b, c, d is a square with side length 4 and that k is between 0 and 4. Let points uh, P, Q, R, and S be on B, C, C, D, D, A, and A, P, so that B, P over P, C is C, Q over Q, D, is D, R over R, A, A, S over S, P, is K over 4 minus K. What is the value of K that minimizes the area of quadrilateral P, Q, R, S? Let's label this as best as we can. Side length is 4, okay? So we got 4 there. And then a whole bunch of ratios that are K and 4 minus K. So this is K, this is 4 minus K. If I can squeeze that in there. I don't think I can. Hold on. I think I'm going to have to move this around. Okay. 4 minus k. This is k. And this is 4 minus k. That, that. And then this is k. And this is 4 minus k. And anything else? I don't think so. And then I, I'm going to need to draw one line that may seem a bit like that. Uh, let me actually let me use a different color because I, I think the color is going to be important. So I'm going to draw a line like this, and then I'll explain why. Because I, I'm going to need that. Okay. So first of all, this is obviously the whole basis for my labeling. But now we got to figure out PQRS. Now PQRS is basically PQRS. Okay, so that guy. Now how do I get that? I get it by taking the entire square, would be 4 squared, and then subtracting from it the triangles. So first, let me use a different uh, color. First I'll subtract that triangle. So that's going to be 1 half base times height. So K times 4 minus K. Then subtracting from the entire square that triangle, which is also one half base times height, which is k times four minus k. And then what's the next guy I got to? Oh, subtracting this guy, this big triangle right here. And that is well, one half base, which is four times height, which is k. And let me just pause for a second to see if I'm doing this properly. I think I am. And then the last triangle is a little bit trickier, this guy right here. That is why I drew that line. That's going to be 1 half base times height. Now you got to think, what is the base, what is the height? Now, the base and the height is figured out from the fact that, now I'm going to need another color here, these two triangles are the same. This triangle that I'm uh, shading in yellow and this triangle. Those two triangles are not the same. Uh, they're similar in terms of their the ratio of the angles. And the question actually, interestingly, gives us the ratio of AS to SP. It's K over 4 minus K. So same kind of story. AS is K, and the 4 minus K is SP. So that guy there is 4 minus K. So that means that the ratio... Of these sides, let me label them from here to here and then from here to here is also k to 4 minus k since those two triangles have similarity and then the, therefore the ratio of the sides are the same. So I think that's the trickiest part. So therefore the base of this guy, so much labeling here, the, the base would be 4 minus k but then the height is represented by this guy right here, which is K. And, and, and I think that's the trickiest part of the question. The rest is just straightforward. So you do all this algebra. So you get 16 uh, minus 3 over 2 
k times 4 minus k, and then minus 2k. And I'm not sure why I'm using red. Okay, so then this will be 16 uh, minus 3 over 2, 4k minus k squared minus 2k. Let's move this up. So this will be 16 minus 6k plus 3 over 2k squared minus 2k. And then this will be 16 minus 8k plus 3 over 2k squared. And we want, what did we want again? The minimum value of this. Okay, so if this is a parabola and it, the coefficient in front of the k squared is positive, so it opens up. I have no idea what the parabola looks like, but let's just say there. So this is k, and let's just call this, uh, uh, whatever, a for area. So this is a. We want the minimum value. So the minimum value looks like it's there. So we would need to find the value of k for when that achieves the minimum value. And that's done by completing the square. And you guys know how to complete the square? I'll, I'll, in case you don't, I'll just walk you through it really uh, carefully. So the first thing you do is you factor out the 3 over 2, the coefficient in front of the k squared. And then you would have to do the same thing with the coefficient in front of the 8, uh, in front of the k, I should say. And the 16 you can just leave alone. That doesn't need to be messed with. And then now we complete the square. So what you do is you take this coefficient, which technically uh, is uh, minus 16 over 3, right? And so let me just write that here. You take half of it, so that would be minus 16 over 6, and then you square it. So if you square it, it becomes 16 over 6 squared. And then you put that back into the equation, so as follows. So you got k squared minus 16 over k, oops, minus 16 over 3k is what I should say. And then you add that 16 over 6 squared, and then you immediately subtract it. And this is the process of completing the square, and don't forget that 16. Now, nice things happen is that these three terms are able to factor, and they factor very nicely, k minus... Uh, 16 over 6, all squared. Yeah. And then when you kick this out, don't forget to uh, incorporate that 3 over 2. So it would be minus uh, 3 over 2 times 16 over 6, all squared. And then don't forget that 16 that's hanging out out there. Now, this completes the square. This basically tells me that when k is equal to 16 over 6, this whole thing vanishes, and therefore you would get the minimum value for the a. And in this case, not that it's required, uh, but I can calculate it for you. When k is equal to 16 over 6, it would be this minus 3 over 2, 16 over 6 squared plus 16. And when you crunch out all those numbers, you get 5 and 1 third. Now, that's not required. The only thing they wanted you to figure out was that. And I think in lowest terms, of course, so it would be 8 over 3. So k equal to 8 over 3 is the answer to the question, what is the value of k which minimizes the area of the quadrilateral PQRS?